Welcome to Under Grace Devotional Hour with Pastor Sharon Reyes. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us here at Under Grace Ministries. I'm Pastor Sharon, and with me is Pastor Stephanie. Our prayer is that these devotions offered to you each week will build a foundation by the power of the Holy Spirit, that in faith that you will have a deeper knowledge of the one who truly loves you and grow into rest in him. In these devotions, we pray that you hear what is spoken today, and as you hear it, you will consider it with the Holy Spirit, what he's saying to you personally. Let's pray. Father, your word says in Psalms 27, the one thing we ask of you, O Lord, this is what we seek, that we may dwell in your house all the days of our lives. Lord, we desire to gaze upon your beauty and seek you in your temple. Lord, this is what we ask. Enlighten and open our hearts and cause our hearts, Lord, to burn within us, to know you and to grow in the grace and the knowledge of you, Lord. Fan the flames of our hearts by your spirit and fill us with fresh desires to quiet ourselves in your presence. We need you, Lord, and we ask you to anoint this time together and the word spoken for your glory by your spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, today's devotional is on quiet time, and my heart is to share what I've learned and experienced. And this is not to give you a formula. We're all in different places with our relationship with Christ. It's unique and very personal. And my prayer is that this devotional will bring a desire for you to seek times where you need those moments with the Lord, the garden, that you will grow and learn of him. Well, a few devotionals back, we spoke about worship, and we discussed the value of worship, how it brings healing to our souls, emotions, and above all, we worship and truly honors, worship truly honors and ministers to the one who is worthy of all praise. The Lord inhabits the praises of his people, and we enter into his presence. We prepare our hearts by entering in his gates through worship, giving thanks, and knowing that we are entering our Father's throne of grace and mercy. We climb up on our Father's lap, where we sit on his feet, and in these times they are very precious to the Lord, and they will not be taken from you. Trying to get quiet with the Lord. Has this ever happened to you? You make your plans to get quiet with the Lord, and you try to quiet yourself long enough and to read his word and seek him, and then you fall asleep. Or has this one happened? You plan to get up before everyone else and your alarm goes off and you have really good intentions. And you hit the snooze and you start seeking the Lord in prayer. And then you wake up and it's already been another hour. Oh, how about this one? You finally get into the place of quietness with the Lord and your phone rings or the kids are starting their day or the day is calling you with all its to-dos flowing through your mind. Here's another one. You know, you're in a place with the Lord and you're finally pouring out your soul and your husband or your wife walks in the room and wants to tell you about their plans for the day. Yeah. With all these things pulling at us, it's not easy to get quiet with the Lord. It can really be a battle, but it's one worth fighting for. When I first started, to have quiet times with the Lord. Being a newborn Christian, I would go to the throne room with anxiety and so much uncertainty. I never read the Bible, so I had no idea what to expect. I did not know who I was or who the one who longs to meet with me. You know, well, every relationship starts somewhere. And even in my anxieties, the Lord was so gentle and he guided me with much patience and long suffering. He still does. If I were him, I would have said, forget it, I give up a long time ago, but not our Father, who never abandons us. Jesus said, I will never leave you or forsake you. And this is a gem of a promise to hold fast to. As I've learned to get quiet with the Lord, I'm growing more and more aware of my need to meet with him daily. I can't start my day without seeking him. I won't make it throughout the day. In looking at Jesus' life in this area while he walked here on earth, 
He showed us the need to have these times of oneness with the Father. Certainly if Jesus needed these precious times with the Father, how much more do we need them? Let's look at some scriptures that show that Jesus sought to have these times. Mark 1, 35 tells us, that very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up. He left the house and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. And Jesus often withdrew to lowly places and prayed. Luke 5, 16. From these times alone with the Father, Jesus received and did what the Father showed him and spoke to him. Let's look at these two scriptures. John 5, 19. Very truly I tell you, the Son can do nothing by himself. He can do only what he sees his Father doing. Because whatever the Father does, the Son also does. John 5.30, Jesus said, By myself I can do nothing. I judge only as I hear, and my judgment is just. For I seek not to please myself, but him who sent me. We see also in John 8, I think it was 22. So Jesus said, When you lift up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am he, and I do nothing of my own initiative, but I speak these things as the Father taught me. Jesus was about the Father's business, and if a time of quiet prayer was a priority for Jesus, how much more do we need to make it a priority in our lives? There are precious benefits in these times with the Lord, treasures to hide in your heart, moments more valuable than anything else. In times alone with the Lord, we surrender our cares and our burdens, our anxieties that weigh us down, onto Him. Philippians 4, 6, and 7 says, Don't fret or worry. Instead, pray and let petitions be known. Praise and shape your words into prayer. Letting know God know your concerns. Before you know it, a sense of God's wholeness, everything coming together for good, will come and settle you down. It's wonderful what happens when Christ displaces worry at the center of your life. 1 Peter 5, 7 in the Amplified Bible says it like this, Casting the whole of your cares, all your anxieties, all your worries, all your concerns, once and for all, on Him, for He cares for you affectionately and cares about you watchfully. I've had to learn to do this. It didn't come overnight, and it's still a work in progress. One treasure I will share with you that I did receive in a quiet time with the Lord and I was struggling in a certain area in my emotions that needed healing. And the Lord in these quiet times has worked on my heart in this area and is still going to the root of it. But he's showing me something and he's continually showed me this in a sweet way in this one particular day, just as a loving father does. He said to me in my heart, as children grow and learn to crawl, we are in front of them. We're encouraging them to crawl. We even get on our hands and our knees to teach them how to do it. And when they learn to take those first steps, we hold their hands and we guide them. And when they take those first steps and they fall, we're right there to pick them up and hug them and love them and encourage them and let them know that they can do it. Well, how much more is our Heavenly Father there for us in our failures and our fears? And he's drawing us to him, to heal us, to restore us, to strengthen us. The Lord has placed on my heart this sweet picture with the scripture of Isaiah 41. 10. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not anxiously look about you, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, surely I will help you. And surely I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. I walked away from this quiet time that day. <clears throat> excuse me, with this heart, or, excuse me, <clears throat> I walked away this day with a heart vision of how I am truly loved. It was well worth the time of the Lord. Healing took place, and I was able to receive a precious treasure that no one can take from me. It is stored forever in my heart. There are treasure chests full for each and every one of us. Blessings to overflow from his heart to ours. 
You know, in these times of quietness with the Father, we can also find his perspective, his direction, his wisdom, his guidance. And most of all, we are learning and growing and knowing of who he is. You know, as David spoke in Psalms 119, 105, it says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. We are given wisdom and principles to live by and to walk in. Spending time with the Lord in these moments, you'll find new strengths and insurance of his protection. Praying as I knew it to be uh, was to come to the Lord and recite words that sound good. And I'm not saying that they weren't, but they were on my lips and not of my heart. The true meaning of prayer over time has become a place to meet with God and talk with him in the garden. We are created to have this fellowship. It's a Greek word called koronia, and I discovered it when I was listening to a pastor a few years ago. It means fellowship. I never forgot it. I was intrigued by this word. Here's why. Koronia is because being in agreement with one another, being united in purpose, serving alongside each other. Our koronia with each other flows from the koronia with Jesus. Amos 3.3 3 says, can two walk together except they be agreed? Prayer is talking to God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus, for they are one. Giving him our day and inviting the Holy Spirit to orchestrate it and guide us to walk in this corner, oneness with him. These times of meeting with the Father through his word, we are purified by the Holy Spirit. He will show us where we are out of alignment in our lives. He brings us back into all truth. If something in our life is not lined up with the truth, he'll reveal it. And we can go to the Father and talk to him about it. Confess it. He's faithful to forgive us. And whatever has held us, he will set us free from that sin that has separated us. Well, there may be something that he may bring to your attention in a quiet time with him of a warning that you're too close to that edge. He's our good shepherd. And this we lay down our thoughts, our ways, and come in agreement with the Lord's thoughts and ways. Proverbs 16, 3 says, Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy shot thy I, excuse me, thy thoughts shall be established. The Amplified Version says it like this Roll your works upon the Lord, commit and trust them wholly to him, and he will cause your thoughts to become agreeable to his will. And so shall your plans be established and succeed. We know the Father loves us so much to keep us where we're at. His goal is to conform us into the image of his Son. And these times are divine times to meet with the Lord and allow him to reveal and restore our souls. We have great and precious promises in Christ Jesus. And in order to know them, we need to go mining, treasure hunting. We are really rich in Christ. And as we read the word, the Holy Spirit will lead us and reveal to us those precious promises to take hold of. These promises are for us to stand on. We take the promises given to us in those precious moments with the Lord for what is needed for the day or for our circumstances in the life. We set our hearts in prayer with these promises, and we can pray them over our families, our loved ones, and our situations. As children of the Most High God, we can trust and rely on His Word, for all the promises of God are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. And praying His Word are prayers that will enter the throne, and He will bring them to work in our lives, in His timing, and our place is to remain pure before Him, trusting that he will be, bring it according to his will. Jesus told us how to pray. He said, go to the Father in his name and ask what you will and he will do it. John 16, 23. He also said, I am the vine and you are the branches and those who remain in me and I in him will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. And if anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away as a branch and dries up. And they gather them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. But verse 7 says, If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. 
John 15, 5 through 7. Well, the Lord will perform his word. Jeremiah first one sorry, Jeremiah 1 12 tells us, For I am watching over my word to perform it. And Isaiah 55 11 also tells us and encourages us in saying that my word that goes out of my mouth, it will not return to me empty. It will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. In the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus let us hear his prayer with the Father. In John 17, if you get a chance to read this prayer, you'll see what a Savior you really have. You will see the love of your Father and the love that your Lord has for you. We can truly know Jesus' prayers are answered and are continually being answered in more ways than you can even imagine. When you get a chance, read John 17. Growing in our relationship with the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ is an ongoing process. Learning to be led by the Holy Spirit, trusting that he has you. In these quiet times with the Lord, you become more acquainted with the one who truly does love you. He's so smitten in you. In these times of quietness with the Lord, we are getting to know the God, our God, through his word. Jesus told us that the Holy Spirit will bring us into all truth. He also said in John 8, 31 and 32, If you continue in my word, then you are truly disciples of mine. You shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. For whom the Son sets free, you are free indeed. His word is alive and powerful. A heart that longs to be free will seek to know the word of truth. And in order to know and be set free, it's important to be with the Lord, reading his word and allowing the Holy Spirit to bring you into all truth. It may just be one word that the Lord may use that day, or the context of the story itself. You don't have to make this happen. I've still tried that, and it just hurts my brain. I can't figure it out. There's no freedom there at all. So I encourage you, just relax, and let the Holy Spirit show you. The Lord will bring you into all light and truth. I have to remind myself of this, that He will do it in me. I just need to think on it and ask the Lord to show me what He wants to show me in this scripture. Jesus also told us in John 14, 26, But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, He will teach you all things and bring you to remembrance all that I have said to you. If we fill our minds with the Word and hide His Word in our hearts, the Holy Spirit will have something to work with and to teach us and to bring remembrance to us. When I found this out, I asked the Lord to give me a desire to know his word and to teach me. I have to admit, I struggle in this area, and I'm not the best in meditation, but I desire to grow in this area. Really, I'm actually surprised when I'm praying for someone and the Lord reminds me of a scripture or the context of it to help me bring peace to that person and revelation or healing. I'm so grateful that even in the little moments of meditation or the times of reading that I've done, he does bring it back to me. And this is the work of the Holy Spirit. I do want to encourage you, if you're a new believer in the Lord, or one that has been a believer for some time, and you've not developed quiet times in your life, seek the Lord and ask him to give you the desire and to teach you all truth. You know, the enemy of our soul wants to keep us out of the Word of God. I know, I fought this fight. The first year I came to the Lord, I believed I can't read it because I'll never understand it. So I didn't. The enemy of my soul had his hand in lies since I was a child, having me believe that I was stupid and will not be able to read. I grew up with this lie, but that lie has been disarmed. And I'm here today telling you I love the word of the Lord. I remember the day that the Lord tugged at my heart and said, just read it. I'll do the revealing. The Lord crushed this lie to the dust and placed it under my feet. And I praise you, Lord, for that. Don't let Satan lie to you that you will not understand or not when you read it. The Holy Spirit will reveal it to you. He will bring you into all truth. And you will grow 
and his word and in the times of need of the word, the Holy Spirit will bring you remembrance. Peter um, encourages us in 2 Peter 1, chapter 1, 1 through 4. To those who have received a faith of the same kind of ours, by the righteousness of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ, grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God, of, our, of the Lord Jesus Christ, seeing that his divine power has granted to us everything pertaining to life and godliness, through the true knowledge of him, who has called us by his own glory and excellence. For by these, he has granted to us his precious and magnificent promises, so that in them we may become partakers of his divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world by lust. So I pray that you are encouraged in desiring sweet, quiet times with the Lord, meeting with the Father, your Savior, Jesus Christ, in the gardens of your heart, He's waiting for you with open arms. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for the sweet oneness that you offer to each and every one of us through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Thank you for your friendship of the Holy Spirit who teaches us and brings us into all truth and washes us by, the, by your word. Thank you, Lord, for your precious promises that you give us and all the blessings that you pour out on us. Thank you, Lord, for your graciousness to us, and we bless you for your abounding love. And it is in your holy name, Jesus, that we pray. Thank you for joining us here today at Under Grace Ministries. We pray you were touched by the word of the Lord, filling your hearts to join in oneness with the Lord, afresh and anew. Until then, may the Lord bless you and keep you. In Jesus' name, God bless.